Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model finite elements in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on generating a finite element mesh. Now before we start diving into the different techniques on how to generate a finite element mesh in STAD Pro, let's first discuss a few basic concepts of a finite element mesh. Now when you analyze a beam, if the displacements at the ends are known, the displacements at intermediate points can be determined using secondary analysis techniques like the moment area method. However, there are no similar equations to determine the displacement at some arbitrary point within the three or four corners of a plate. In a finite element analysis, displacements and stresses can only be determined at the nodes or corners of the elements. So it is impossible to accurately model the behavior of a plate using just a single plate element. Since there is frequently a need to evaluate displacements at arbitrary points within a slab and around the perimeter, slabs must be modeled using, using a mesh of plate elements in such a way that the nodes of some elements coordinate with the points of interest. For these reasons, a finite element analysis will almost always require a mesh of plate elements as opposed to just a single element or a few elements. Now that we have established the need for a mesh of plate elements in most practical situations, the next item to consider is the mesh density. The guiding concept should be to use a mesh that is as coarse as it can be while still providing adequate results. In general, Coarser meshes will be stiffer than finer meshes, and the analysis results should converge towards a theoretical solution as the mesh density increases. Now consider a slab supported by a frame and assume that under load it has a deflected shape similar to the figure on your screen. In order to obtain deflection information along the indicated edge, it is necessary to know the deflections at the points of maximum deflection at the endpoints and at a few intermediate points. The more data points there are, the more accurately the deflected shape can be modeled. On the other hand, it would be undesirable to have too many points since this would make the structure too cumbersome to analyze. Now, as a few tips, you may want to try to predict the approximate deflected shape of the structure and envision the number of nodes that would be required. You're also going to note that finer meshes may, need, may be needed in the vicinity of a concentrated force to visualize the deflected shape or to evaluate the stresses and stress gradients at that location. Now a finer mesh should be considered around any holes of a plate as well. There are no hard and fast rules for mesh density, but once a mesh has been created and incorporated into a model, it can be difficult to go back and change the mesh density and still achieve proper connectivity. So it is worth considering thoroughly before developing a model too far. Let's now discuss the different tools that will be available for you to achieve a finite element mesh in STAD Pro Connect Edition. Now in the previous video, you learned how to manually create individual elements at a time by drawing them from node to node. That is what we might call the brute force method for generating a mesh. Fortunately, STAD Pro offers many alternative methods that are much more convenient and much less labor intensive than drawing a single element at a time. In this video, we're going to explore three different commands that we can utilize to generate a finite element mesh. The first command would be the super element method. Then we're going to take a look at the generate surface meshing command. And finally, we're going to take a look at the structure wizard. We will now return our attention to our sample model. And the first thing we're going to show you is how to create a finite element mesh from a super element. You can use the generate mesh command as an excellent way to generate a mesh from a triangular or quadrilateral super element that already exists in your model. So what we're going to do is we're going to model our individual finite elements representing an overall slab area or wall area first. Once you have these plate elements or super elements in your model, you can then divide them up into smaller finite element mesh. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to select the plate that you want to mesh. To do that, I'm going to go up to my ribbon toolbar, click on my select tab, 
and then use my plates cursor to select one of the plates in the model. Now that I have this plate selected, I'm going to return to the geometry tab in the ribbon, or as you can see, once I have a plate selected, I have a plate tools area. Now once I move here, I'm going to go ahead and find my plate mesh icon. And then I can tell the program what type of meshing I would like to choose. For this area, I'm going to select the quadrilateral meshing option. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And here I'm asked to give some information on how I want to create the mesh. Now the corners area within this dialog is automatically populated for me and it's based on the geometry of the element I already selected. You're going to notice that the different lengths are also indicated, which is a good tool to use so that you can determine how to best specify the density of your mesh to yield as close to square or equilateral triangle elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the division column. Now this will be used to specify the number of divisions to create along each side of the overall super element. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at the size of our sides. And I'm going to go ahead and on the shorter sides of my rectangular element, I'm going to specify to create three divisions. On the longer side, I'm going to leave that set to 10 and I'm going to select the quadrilateral type of element. Now you've probably also noticed that we have a bias column available. Now this column is used to create divisions of varying length if desired. Now if the goal is to create equal divisions along the length of each side, you're going to set the bias parameter to 1, which we'll do in this exercise. Once you're done specifying your meshing, meshing parameters, we'll go ahead and click apply. And then you can see that our finite element mesh has been created. Now you're going to go ahead and do this for one super element at a time if all of your super elements are of a different size. Now for our model, we do have a pretty repetitive series of plates at this roof level. And if we want to mesh all of them at the same time, since they are of similar size, we can do this all in one step as well. So I'm going to hold down my control key, use my plates cursor again to select all the plates at this level. Again, I can just go to my plate mesh area. And here I'm just being asked to enter the number of divisions. I'm going to enter three along the shorter sides and 10 along the longer sides. To complete this process, we'll go ahead and click OK. And we're going to go ahead and select quadrilateral meshing. As you can see, when you select more than one plate at a time, the series of dialogues are a little bit different, but the basic fields are the same. The next command we're going to show you how to use is the generate surface meshing command. This will be used to generate a polygonal or quadrilateral finite element mesh without the need of creating that super element first. To activate this tool, we're going to go up to the Geometry tab in our Ribbon Toolbar, and we're going to find our Generate Mesh icon. And we're going to notice that this is a pull-down menu, which is where we'll find our Surface Mesh command. You're going to notice that when you select that command, your cursor is going to change shape. And again, your status bar will give, be giving you instructions on what to do next. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the perimeter of our polygon. Now this is the only tool we've shown you so far, which does not require you to either select three or four nodes. So this is an excellent tool that you can use for structures that have an irregular geometry that should be assigned to a wall or a slab. Now it still has the same rules as far as creating an individual mesh or an individual plate element where you do want to select your nodes in order, either clockwise or counterclockwise to avoid any warped plates. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a slab over this area. And of course this area doesn't have a super element attached to it. So I'm going to select my first node and I'm going to see my cursor is rubber banding. Then I'm going to select the nodes around the perimeter and I'm going to go in a clockwise fashion. Now again, this tool allows you to select um, some non-regular geometry. So when I'm done with my polygon, I'm just going to click back at my starting node to close the loop. 
When you use this tool, you're going to have the option to select polygonal or quadrilateral meshing. If you selected quadrilateral meshing, it's going to be basically very similar to the process we used in the previous exercise to create a um, very regular series of quadrilateral plate elements. For this exercise, though, I'm going to select polygonal meshing. And you're going to notice a few differences when you select this type of meshing. The first difference is that triangular elements will be created instead of quadrilateral elements. Now what we're going to notice is that the division and the bias fields are still available and they basically do the same thing as when we had selected quadrilateral meshing. One of the major differences here though is that you are able to add a hole in your slab at the same point as generating your meshing. So we're going to come over to this area, we're going to find the holes area and we're going to tell the program that we want to add a new hole, which is, of course, one of the major advantages of using polygonal meshing. So here I'm going to enter the type of hole I have. I'm going to select a circular hole. I need to select the origin, and this is based on its global coordinate position. And you do want to select an area that's within your slab that you're modeling. So I'm going to enter my x, y, and z coordinates for the center point. I'm going to enter a radius of my circle and the number of divisions along the perimeter. We'll go ahead and set that to 10. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click OK. And you can see here that I was able to model a finite element mesh in one step without using a super element. And by using polygonal meshing, you're also able to model holes or penetrations in your slab all in one step. The next process we're going to show you is how to use the structure wizard to generate a finite element mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just create a new blank file in STAD Pro to start this process, just to make it easier to understand and see the effects of what this command is going to do for us. So to create a new model, I'm going to go to the File tab in my ribbon toolbar, and I'm just going to select a new option. We'll go ahead and name the structure, and we're going to use an analytical workflow. And we're going to finish this off by clicking Create. Once we have a blank model, we're ready to go ahead and invoke the Structure Wizard. Now, we don't necessarily have to start the Structure Wizard on a blank file to begin with. You can also invoke the Structure Wizard on a model that you're already working on, and that already contains some information. To access the Structure Wizard, you're going to go up to the Geometry tab in your Ribbon Toolbar, and you're going to find your Structure Wizard icon, which is available within your Structure Tools. Now, the Structure Wizard offers a variety, or a library, of predefined structure prototypes. The Structure Wizard may parametrically generate a structural model, and then transfer and superimpose it onto the current structure that you have. Now we're going to notice in the model type areas that we have several different types of models, including some surface and plate models. So let's go ahead and select that option, and then we can select any one of these prototypes that best looks like the structure we're trying to create. For this model, I'm going to go ahead and select a cylindrical structure, and I'm just going to double click on the graphic over in the left hand pane. Here I'm going to enter some different parameters for my structure. So I'm going to say the length, and this is the overall length, is going to be 10 feet long. We'll give it a starting and ending radius of 5 feet and a sweep angle of 360 degrees. We're going to enter the divisions along the length and the divisions along the perimeter. We can choose to generate triangular elements or quadrilateral elements, and I'm going to leave this unselected. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the Apply button, and then we can see that our finite element prototype has been generated. Now, as I'm reviewing this model, before I commit it to my STAD Pro model, I may want to make some changes. For example, maybe I want to add a few more divisions along the perimeter. To make any changes, you're going to want to double click in this window, and then you can make any changes in here. Here I'll change the number along the perimeter to 35 and click Apply. And you can see how very quickly you can change some of your parameters. If you're satisfied with how your model looks, 
we're going to go ahead and send this over to our STAD Pro model. As you can see, our STAD Pro model doesn't contain any information yet. In the menu bar within the structure wizard, I'm going to select File and then Merge Model with your STAD Pro model. We're going to confirm this operation with Yes, and then we're going to enter our insertion point. I'm going to insert my model at 000, and then we'll click OK. And you can see here that all of the nodes that were required have been created. If I go to my plate layout, I can see that all the plates in this model have also been generated for me. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.